Hello and warm welcome to Super Screen News at 6. We're reaching you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. I am Olamide Ewonka. We're live. glad to have you join us. The president, he says, President Mohamed Buhari has demonstrated his fitness to run for a second term by trekking 800 meters from the Eid praying ground in Dora to his private residence. After the Eid prayers, President Mohamed Buhari shone protocol and opted to trek some 800 meters, acknowledging some cheers from Nigerians who lined up on his home routes to catch a glimpse of him. You will recall that a presidential aspirant and incumbent governor of Sokoto State, Amin Utambua, last week alleged that Buhari is too whole and the rule the country beyond 2019. However, the president's senior special assistant on media and publicity, Gara Bashehu, said trekking by the president is a positive response to Tambuwa's Da tribe. And now it is day two of the holidays declared by the federal government to mark the Ida Kabir Festival. Super Screen's Mike Osemeke went around Lagos to find out how Muslims and all the Nigerians are celebrating the day. Some of the fun seekers told Super Screen News that there is the need to unwind, irrespective of the prevailing economic situation in Nigeria, since the celebration comes once in a year. I haven't enjoyed this much because um, I haven't seen a friend that uh, th that have posted me any salamis, so I haven't enjoyed. And I hope uh, some of you guys will, <laughs> will bring me some salamis. You know, Nigeria situation. Some people, everything that happens, there's people that have the advantage. No matter what is going on, people are celebrating. For example, like Muslim, this is their period. Whether you have or you don't have, you will find a little thing to celebrate with your family. They also prayed for peace and progress of Nigeria as they look forward to more Salah celebrations in the future. We thank Almighty Allah that uh, spent a lot of this year for seeing the Eid al Kabir, the great celebration for Muslims. We started the ram safe, uh, safely, peacefully, and lovely. So we thank Almighty Allah that spared my wife, me, and my children, my grandma, my mommy, my brothers, all of us here, we are happy. No matter what happened in the country and how it happens, we have to still say thank you, God. We have to come with your family, enjoy with your family, entertain yourself. You can't say because the country is like this, like that, you don't want to enjoy yourself. You have to. It's, it's a must for you. President Mohamed Buhari says his administration will not scrap the National Youth Service Corps, NYC, as being proposed by some Nigerians. The president who disclosed this to journalists in Dora community in Katina State said the NYC is part of his shadow during the Salah celebrations. The senior special assistant on media publicity, Gar Bashehu, in a statement quoted the president, saying it is better for youths in a country to know all the parts of the country than being familiar with only their states. You will recall that the scheme was established in 1973 during the regime of the former military leader, Yakubu Gowan. And now the Mieti Ala Kato British Association of Nigeria has won the Senate President Bukola Saraki to resign his position as the Senate President immediately or be forced to do so. The National Coordinator of the Association, Benue State, Gaios Gololo, who disclosed this to journalists, said Saraki has created numerous problems for the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, which he alleged had affected the economic and social growth of the nation. He said Nigerians are in dire needs of the people that have the interest of the masses at art. Golo also said the Mieti Ala is looking for a leader that would preside over the affairs of the Senate with ultimate respect for the executive and judiciary, not someone like Saraki who would always come out to undo the presidency. And our former aviation minister, Femi Fani Kayode, has reacted to the call by the Mieti Ala Kato British Association for the resignation of Senate President Bukola Saraki. Reacting to the call, Fani Kayode said it is ominous and sinister, urging Saraki to watch his back, and that Mieti Ala is a terrorist organization which controls the Fulani headsman. 
He will recall that the association had earlier urged Saraki to resign or would be forced out of office if he refuses to resign his position immediately, claiming he had created numerous problems for the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has ordered the immediate recommencement of the continuous nationwide membership registration in all 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. In a statement signed by the party's acting National Publicity Secretary, Yakini Nabena in Abuja, he said the decision was taken in response to calls from members of the public interested in joining the APC to support the change agenda of President Mohamed Buhari led administration. Nabena said the exercise will include both fresh registrations and revalidation of existing memberships for the purpose of issuance of the party's permanent membership cards. And now the senator representing the Akwa Ibom Northeast Senatorial District, Basi Albert, says no amount of intimidation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, will make him dump the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the All Progressives Congress, APC. Albert, who disclosed this to journalists, said he is prepared to stand by the PDP, adding that the charge by the EFCC is orchestrated by someone in the state trying to coerce him to join the APC. He said if a similar situation presented itself in the future, he would still remain loyal with the party. He will recall that he has filed a 14-count charge at the Nikeja High Court against Albert for an allegedly receiving 12 cars worth $254 million between 2010 and 2014, while serving as the Commissioner of Finance during the administration of former Governor Gottswil Apabio. And now the Special Assistant on Environmental Services, Sunday Oguni, to the choir state governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, has resigned his appointment. Report says Oguni tendered his resignation letter to the governor through the office of the secretary to the state government, did not state the reasons for his decision. You will recall that recently about 252 aides of Sokoto state governor Ambinu Tambua were relieved of their appointment over the question of loyalty to the governor. And now the former Inspector General of Police, Mike Okiro, says the directive of presidency for the overhauling of the special anti-robbery squad, SARS, is timely. Okiro, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said SARS was formed to confront armed robbery, car snatching and kidnapping, amongst others. But the operatives deviated from the reasons and gets involved in mundane cases. Okiro also urged the government not to succumb to the end SARS protests because they have a role to play as far as criminality is in the society. You will recall that the operative was formed in 1991 when the notorious Shino Rambo was rampaging in Lagos and the entire Southwest snatching cars, amongst others. Slaughtering of rams is significant feat with the Idel Kaber celebrations, a festival commemorated in remembrance of Prophet Ibrahim's selflessness and willingness to sacrifice his only son to God. In this report, we take a look at the significance of ram killing during the Eid festival. <laughs> Kaber, also known as Eid al Adha, is a festival of sacrifice celebrated by Muslims across the world to remember the obedience of Prophet Ibrahim, who was asked to sacrifice his son as the ultimate sacrifice ever. The Eid al Adha is considered the holiest of the two Muslim holidays, the second being the Eid al Fitri, and this. In commemoration of this, an animal, mostly Ram, is sacrificed and divided into three parts and one third of the share is given to the poor and needy, another is given to the relatives, while the other is retained by the family. These Muslim faithful speak about the significance of slaughtering rams. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercies and ever miraculous manners has take our life to be important and give us a ram as a sacrifice Instead of uh, sacrifice, his only son, then Prophet Ismail. 
Today is the day God asked Prophet Ibrahim to sacrifice his only son to him. So at the point of sacrificing his son, God provided a ram in replacement of his son. This act is commemorated annually by Muslims. On the religious extremism of the Boko Haram sect and other terrorist organizations across the world, these Muslim clerics express total objections to the killings, maintaining that Islam is a religion of peace and love for humanity. God gave us Prophet Muhammad. He didn't instruct him to kill but to preach the good news. The Prophet never killed anyone. He only preached the word. So for those killing in the name of Allah, this is not true Islamic doctrine. And it is not even in the Quran. The issue of Boko Haram, we all see we are not we are not blind, we are not deaf, we see what has been going on in the, in the country. The issue of uh, Boko Haram has been in existence for long. May God Almighty Allah help us to overcome it. So but the people who are indulging in all these uh, bad practices, may God Almighty Allah in his mercy overcome it for us in this country. They are not good believers, they are not uh, Muslims. On special days such as this, it can only be hoped that Nigerians embrace the selflessness and obedience of Prophet Ibrahim. Olamide Onka. And now I read you numbering above 15 have reportedly set the Imo Magistrate Court on fire. The police spokesperson in the state, Andrew Enwerem, who disclosed this to journalists, said the incident is a case of suspected arson. Enwerem said the fire destroyed all documents in the court before it could be quenched. He also said the commissioner of police, Daduki Galandashi, has mandated the area commander in charge of Olu Zone to commence full investigations into the matter. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll take some business stories. Stay with us. Welcome back to Super Screen News at 6 and now for some business stories. The federal government says rice being imported into the country is not good for human consumption. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Muhammad, who disclosed this to journalists in Choir State, said the imported rice is meant to feed the cattle in the countries of origin. Muhammad said the imported rice is cheaper than locally produced ones because it is dumped in Nigeria. The minister also said the federal government is making concerted efforts to support rice farmers in the country and other to boost their production. And now the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngigi, has attributed the delay in approval of the new minimum wage for Nigerian workers to state governors' inability to come up with an agreed figure. Ngige, who disclosed this to journalists, said there is no truth in the news that the federal government is planning to increase monthly allowance of core members. Describing the governor as critical partners in the wage determination, Ngige said it would not want to give any date a month when the minimum wage would be implemented because the process of fixing the minimum wage is still a little bit longer. Ngige said a tripartite committee has been established with a timetable that would enable them to finish everything by the end of August 2018. Still in business, the bank customers have experienced 278,966 failed electronic payment transactions on the Nigerian interbank settlement system and the Instabank Play and platform. Report says the analysis of the live electronic payment data indicated that a failure rate of 5.15% was recorded on the platform. The NIP has been adjudged as the most preferred platform for electronic payment, having crossed more than transactions in the monetary terms than the national electronic funds transfer, the point of sales and e bills payment over the years. The statistics also showed that the POS transactions carried out by retailers in the country also had a high figure as a rate percent of 11.41% as of 5.40 p.m. on the same day.
out of a total transaction volume of 569,838. <laughs> And now the National Bureau of Statistics has released the capital importation report for the second quarter of the year, showing that investment inflows dropped by 12.53% to $5.51 billion from the first quarter. The Bureau, in the report which was posted on its website, said when compared with the investment inflow for the second quarter of 2017, the $5.51 billion represented an increase of 207.62%. The Nigerian Bureau of Statistics attributed a decline recorded in the second quarter of this year to a reduction in the portfolio and other investments, which declined by 9.76% and 24.07% respectively. We'll take another break now. When we return, we'll take some foreign stories plus some sport news. Stay with us. Super Dawn. Your daily live current affairs program where topical issues that border on politics, economy, sport and sizzling national issues are analyzed. Now holds every Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Superscreen Television. Let your voice be heard. Join us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Super Screen News at 6, broadcasting to you from Lagos State, Nigeria. And on the foreign scene, the United States National Security Advisor, John Bolton, has warned that the United States would respond very strongly.